and welcome to another uh, week of life group. The week, past week we uh, talked on the law by Moses, grace through Jesus Christ. This week we'll be talking about sin consciousness. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you for tonight. We thank you for all the things that you are doing. We thank you for the awesome work that is being done through these life groups. We thank you, Father, because you help us, you touch us, you grow us. Lord, your word doesn't return to you void, but void, but it goes and does what you sent it to do. In Jesus' name, amen. We want to thank the life group leaders for hosting life groups in their homes. And I just want to encourage you and tell you that you're doing an awesome work. And there's people that will leave your life group, but they will leave with a good seed planted in them. So don't be discouraged. Continue doing what you're doing because it's an awesome work. Because anything that we do for God has rewards and it's awesome. Amen. Sin consciousness. This week we're going to be talking about sin consciousness. And we're going to look at Romans 6.14. It says, For sin will no longer be a master over you, since you are not under the law as slaves, but under unmerited grace as recipients of God's favor and mercy. So we can no longer be slaves to sin. Why? Because we're no longer under the law. The law causes us to sin. Grace removes the sin away from us. Grace takes us out of sin. So we no longer have to think that, oh, I fall into this sin all the time, or I just can't do it right, or I just can't, you know, get it done right. But whatever you're struggling with, you got to remember that you're not doing this alone. We have God and the Holy Spirit that can help us with any struggles. I remember when I started coming to church in 2004, I was still smoking cigarettes. And I was wanting to help in the church and everything, but I was smoking cigarettes. So I joined the usher team and I was still smoking. I'd go home and I'd smoke afterwards. And I started feeling like this isn't right. I need to not do this. So I said, God, I can't do this. I can't get rid of this. I can't let go of this. Help me let go of this. Help me get rid of this. And do you know that I never knew when I quit smoking? I never realized when it happened. The only thing I know is that one day I just realized and said, I haven't smoked. And, um, it was because I didn't have to do try quitting. I had tried many times before. I didn't have to try doing it on my own. I had God, the Son, the Holy Spirit to help me. And I did that. I asked him, I don't want to be a slave to this. I don't want this to, you know, dangle me around like I'm a puppet on a string or anything like that. I want to be free and free to serve you and to do whatever it is that you want me to do. And don't you know that God freed me from that. Now I'm not going to say that that was it, that I was, I'm the perfect Christian that doesn't have faults or commit sins or anything like that, but it doesn't have dominion over me. It doesn't have me underneath its thumb or feet or, or grip. You know, whenever I realize that something is not right, that something is, is not of God, I ask God to take it away, that it doesn't belong in me. That's not what he gave me. When he created me and for him to take it away and when we remember to actually do that God is quick to come at your aid to take those things away from you so we're no longer slaves we're free we're free from any restraints that can want to come and, and and shackle us we're free what then verse 15 what then we are to conclude, shall we sin because we are not under law, but under grace? Certainly not. Do you not know that when you continually offer yourself to someone to do his will, you are the slaves of the, of the one whom you obey, either slaves of sin, which leads to death, or of obedience, which leads to righteousness, right standing with God. So it says, they're asking, so shall we sin so that there could be a lot of grace like we talked in the in the previous lesson he says certainly not do you not know that whatever you offer yourself to 
you are his slave. You are the slave to that that you offer yourself, that you lend yourself. If you lend yourself to any any particular vice that that you might have been, done before you came to Christ, if you lend yourself again to that, you are the slave of that. And remember, how can we remain in that when we are born again? We are born of Christ. We cannot remain in our old ways because we have been bought with a big price. It says that whatever you lend yourselves to, you're a slave to it, whether it be to sin or whether it be to righteousness. And I really like what it says right there of obedience, which leads to righteousness, the right standing with God. Can you imagine to be slaves to righteousness? I mean, that's like when you're a slave, it's like the your life is, is, for, is living for that. Your life is all about living for that that you're slaved unto. We can look at it at the negative. You know, we see people, slaves to drugs, slaves to alcohol, slaves to womanizing, slaves to adultery, fornication, you know, to name a few. But when we've never looked at to be a slave to righteousness, the same way that we were slaves to all these other things, if we would become slaves to righteousness, can you figure how we would be, where we would be? And I'm not talking about righteousness as, you know, being, you know, <clears throat> um, in a humble way where, you know, we're just going to be all this righteous person that, you know, acts this way and acts that way and this does this. No, I'm talking about knowing that before God, there is no guilt, no shame of anything. You are right in his sight. You are right, perfect in his sight. Can you imagine you get so close to righteousness where these things that could linger on you can just fall away and never be a bother to you ever again? That is awesome. That is an awesome thing to do, to be a slave to righteousness. I think that is, the, that is a goal and something that we should aim for is to being a slave of righteousness because it's being a slave to being all that we can be for God without anything hindering or being in our way of living for God. But thank God, verse 17, that though you were slaves of sins, you became obedient with all your heart to stand to the standard of teaching in which you were instructed and to which you were committed. Because of our obedience to God, we are no longer slaves to sin or anything that it come, that comes with it. We are obedient to God, so we are in right standing with God. In 1 John, how do we become slaves to righteousness? How do we get um, out of sin, out of the clutches of sin, out of falling into sin, how, and, and, and having, not having the, the guilt of sin? How do we do that? Let's look at 1 John chapter 4 verse 10 and this is love not that we love God but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation that is the atoning sacrifice and the satisfying offering for our sins fulfilling God's requirement for justice against sin and placating his wrath in love with Jesus with grace and in thought we will change we will change in our thought because of grace, because of Jesus, because he loved us first, we are able to love him. We didn't know how to love. We didn't have love in us, but it is because of what Jesus did, him being the atoning sacrifice. It is because of that, that we can love him and we are, and, 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 and we are free from sin and he fulfilled the requirement that was against us placating wrath against us. I want to leave you with this thought, thought tonight. How much more can we get to understand the love of God and how can we get to know how much God loves us? I'll leave that in your for your group discussion tonight and discuss it with your group. Father, we just thank you for your word. We thank you because it goes and does what you have sent it to do. In Jesus' name, amen.